Hey everybody, Carson Kressley here. Thanks for watching the Build Series. Today we have a very special group of ladies in the house. It is the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 4, everybody. Yes, go crazy. We've got Monet Exchange, Latrice Royale, Trinity Taylor, Farrah Moan, Valentina, Monique Hart, Jasmine Masters, Naomi Smalls, Gia Gunn, and Manila Luzon. Yes, this is where you can go crazy and we can get to know the gals. Um, that what I love about All Stars is that um, we get to kind of know all of the ladies on their original season and the first season that you're on the show, even like as a judge, the first season you're just like, oh my God, where am I? What's going on? Am I inside? You're just kind of, there's a lot going on, right? Yes. And what I love about All Stars is that you kind of get the second chance that after you've like learned how to swim, then you get to like really be a superstar because you kind of know what to expect. And I'm sure you probably all went through that. Um, so I'll just, you know, we'll just throw some questions around. We also, if you're watching, you can tweet us your questions. Um, we have questions from our fabulous audience right here in New York City. So um, let's just start with, um, let's start with Monet Exchange. Oh. Um, when you walked, yes, give it up for Monet. Yes. Um, so New York City, woo, woo, woo. Yes, you're in your hometown, Go girl. Knicks. I, I don't even know that exists anymore. So when you walked into the workroom um, and you saw all the other uh, contestants, who did you think was your biggest competition? To be very honest, I did think that Naomi was my biggest competition because, you know, Naomi was top three season eight. She's the tallest. She's the tallest. Like, she's like physically, she was my biggest competition. I weigh the most. Um, she weighs the most. Um, no, but you were top three your season. But also, I feel like since your season, I've, I've heard from other queens like Kimchi and Bob and Detox, like, this bitch is fucking fierce and she's a really good competitor. So I was like, she's going to be the silent killer, like a silent fart. You know what I mean? You never know mm. who dealt it, but that bitch will slay the entire fucking room. You know what I'm right. saying? So I thought I thought you were a really big competition. Oh, that's so sweet. I would fart all over you anytime. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Also, we, I am on the same stage that Dan Levy sat on. I am very excited, okay? I want to sit... Shit's Creek, nobody? Oh, I love Shit's yes. Creek. Yes. yes. I love him. Yes. I love you. The brows. Yes, the yes, brows. Yes, now exactly. I get it. Um, okay, on the flip side, I'm going to ask the same question uh, of Trinity Taylor. Uh, who were you most excited to see when you walked into the room? Were there friends? Were there ha friendly faces? What was it like? You know, uh, All Stars is a different beast than your original season because you walk in and you know pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually really excited to see everyone, but most importantly... Valentina. We became really good friends after season nine, and uh, when I saw her, it was just like, yay, I have a sister. Oh, good. I have to send her home, but. Yeah, yeah well, you know, you gotta do what, I got, what you gotta do. Ah. Um, and then, um, now some of you, this is kind of interesting, I think some of you um, got to do All Stars more than once. Um, and that would be Manila and Latrice <laughs> up in here. <laughs> and that I think is great. Um, did anyone have any thoughts about someone maybe, you know, getting a second chance at All Stars? I think They're when old. you come back into the competition, you have such an upper hand. Like, you know how the formula works. Uh -huh. So not only to come back once, but twice, you have an even bigger But do you hand. think there is a formula? Um, blonde and white? I'm just kidding. <laughs> facts are facts! <laughs> Don't, facts are Don't facts. zoom into me. Don't be zooming into me, bitch. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> Zoom in, honey. To be Zoom fair, in. we've all seen Alaska naked. She may be black. I'm just saying, okay? Too funny. But you guys have done it. Was, it. was it somehow less stressful for you because you had been there before? I would, I would, no, absolutely not, no, no. I mean, that's the whole misconception. Everyone thinks, oh, they've done this before. This is their... Okay, first of all, we can have a silent prayer for season one of All Stars, because it was Amen. a absolute shit show. <laughs> they were making that up as they were going, honey. We all knew it, honey. They did not have a clue or vision. And so for us to have to go and endure that uh -huh. monstrosity of a mess, this time coming back was our opportunity to really shine on our own and not have to have our fate lie in someone else's hand. Yeah? I mean, 
All Stars One was an um, amazing experience, and you know when we got there, we didn't know what the new rules were going to be. And when we were put in teams, we all gagged, honey. Mm. But um, you really were forced to like really play well with others, and so that really did help me like go back into the competition. But the rules were completely different from All Stars One because it that. It was judged more like a regular season of Ru RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. And um, the new season, you know, you have to make sure we're not here to impress the judges. You know, we're right. here to impress each other. So True. it Great is point. about like it is about the relationships that you create with your with your queens and your sisters. Absolutely. I, I love judging it because I'm like, we don't have to do anything. I just sit and watch the show, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my beverage? <laughs> I love it. This is full of champagne right now, but you can put it in a coffee cup and no one knows. <laughs> also works at the office, just this little helpful hint. Um, let's ask a question, Gia Gunn. Um, how did you approach All Stars? Um, did you approach it any differently than your original season? Um, on my season, I think I was like, really confused of who I was and I really didn't have a good grasp on who I was as a person. So this time going in mentally, I felt so much more whole and walking into the room of these lovely fishy ladies, I thought, wow, <laughs> it's not a room full of dudes. So I was really happy to see these um, wonderful ladies in the room. Did I approach it any differently? Um, Absolutely not. I think I went in there um, on my A game. I prepped just as much as I did for season six and just tried my hardest. Yeah. And I think what you said about like being more comfortable with yourself allows you to do better because we tell the queens all the time, like, don't try to be this or that. Try to be like the most amazing version of you in that particular challenge. And that's when everybody does their best, when they do their thing within the parameters of what we're asking them for. So Honestly, I feel like going into All-Stars, that's when I really got that. It was mm -hmm. like, do not go on the show to try to be this thing that you think that RuPaul wants you to be. Right. It's like, bitch, he brought you on here. Like, he, he wants that. Like, in my season, I felt trying to be something to right. make Ru see me as a certain way. Like, but I'm going to be a comedy queen this right. week. Oh, I'm going to be a no. glamour queen this week. Just this always week do you within those parameters, and that usually seems to work. Okay, so season 10 and All-Stars 3 delivered on the memes. Um, the memes. The memes. The memes. Uh, <laughs> does All-Stars 4 continue that trend? Um, let's, ask, uh, let's ask Valentina. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Bitch, yes, I did. I did not have eyebrows. But, you know, I, I mean. <laughs> Versatile. But, you know, the thing is, is the, the thing with that is, it's just like, if it becomes a meme or not, no one's trying. The people just do it, and it just right. happens. And the, I don't think that's anybody's intention. It's like, oh, I'm going to go and snatch a meme trophy, because there's no trophy for being a meme. Well, not yet. Well, yeah. But the wowies are coming I mean, up. I would gladly accept the award if it comes with money and... And applause, sure. Meme, I'll take meme, it. meme, 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 meme. Meme malicious definitions make the boys go crazy. Yes. There you go. Oh, wow. See, Damn. that might just happen. That might turn into a meme. Who knows? Um, obviously, RuPaul's Drag Race has become a huge cultural phenomena, but could you talk about the importance of the local drag scene? And we'll ask, um, I'm trying to spread it around. Let's ask um, Jasmine Masters. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes, Jess. It's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Going Next up. question. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there, there is, you know, where's your local scene is where, where do you live now? Los Angeles. In Los, I've heard of it. Yes. Um, <laughs> New York shade. <laughs> um, and do you think that the, lo I mean, that's maybe not a good example of the local drag scene because it's such a big giant city. Like New York and LA, I feel like are their own things. Um, but maybe like, I would, love to answer. I would love to answer that. I, um, that's one of my platforms for being on season nine is advocating for local queens. I come mm -hmm. from, originally come from a really small town in Alabama, and I had to fight my way to uh, become what I've become on my own. There's no resources there. And so I know how it is to really, truly be a local queen from the middle of nowhere. And um, it's really important to... Um, to when you have a, a platform to give praise, to give a light and a voice to those who don't. And um, I think that's important for, for Drag Race girls to do. Stunning! <clears throat> <laughs> 
didn't mean to cut my sister off, but I didn't want him to change the question without me tagging on to that answer. No, go ahead. As someone who comes from a small town, you see the champagne's kicking in. She's preaching. As yeah. you, <laughs> no, really, I really, okay, anyway. Uh, as someone who comes from a small town where they were not looking for drag, they no one's come from Kansas City, I try to make sure that I always show on my Instagram the girls who inspired me, mm -hmm. as well as Drag Survivor is a Kansas City version of RuPaul's Drag Race that has really like pushed the girls in Kansas City to like come harder each week. Mm -hmm. So that's really inspiring to go home and go, I need to stay on my game because my small push pushed them, which pushes me. So it's great. Can I say something on that as yes, well? Yes, of course, pheromone, everybody. I, I want to echo exactly what she said, but I also want there to be awareness of the unfair treatment of local girls from gay bars. I feel like these girls are pumping out new fucking looks every single week, and they are working their goddamn ass off. It's okay, it's the it, interweb. You can curse. Goddamn ass off. <laughs> and they're getting paid fucking pennies, and they're they're investing more into their into their crap than what they're receiving. And I, I think that that's very sad because. Like, I've traveled all over, as all these girls have, and we have met so many amazing, talented queens that just, you know, don't have the platform that we have, and they have to work quadruple, mm -hmm. quadruple as hard, and they're getting nothing. nothing. I mean, at oh, the end of the day, we were all local things. queens at one time. So if it right, weren't for the right. local queens, we wouldn't be here. Very true. Exactly, yeah. Well, the great thing about it is that RuPaul's Drag Race has made everyone in the drag scene step their pussy up mm -hmm. because we're all local queens at one time and we got onto this competition and now we're back and we we stepped our pussies up from that point mm -hmm. so um i think it's really cool because we have all these new queens that are now inspired to do even better than the queens that they watched on tv because mm -hmm. i know coming back to all stars four like every single one of these queens like is so much sickening more sickening than the queens when first season of uh, mm -hmm. Drag Race or the first season of All Stars have ever been. I only had Ginger on Gilligan's Island, everybody. <laughs> That's the only person I could look up to. Um, see, you're so young, they're like, what's he talking about? Was Ginger that a Was yeah, it black and white on Gilligan's Island? No, but your point is well taken. Because Drag Race has become so popular and because you guys are so fierce and are so sickening and are so talented, and I think that's what the show is really showing the world, is that drag is this amazing art form that had been hidden in the shadows of clubs and not everybody was lucky enough to be exposed to it. And now little kids, I mean, have you all been to DragCon? I mean, there are, you know, little four-year-olds and five-year-olds, and they're not like, ooh, this is gay, or this is straight, or this is, they're like, this is just fun, and this is just expression, and this is just art, and it's so wonderful to see. Girl. Because of you guys, little kids in Alabama, or uh, West Texas, or wherever, that didn't have a place, they're like, wow, I could do this, and I could be really fierce, and I mean, in, in 2020, the queens on the show, you're going to die. I mean, they're going to be so... Every year, it keeps getting better, better. What it is that these little kids walk into drag con with higher heels than us, okay, yes. girl? I was yeah. like, take your little ass to school for us, okay, yeah. bitch? Your fresh little Achilles tendons. <laughs> exactly. But prancing that's like, around that's here. the most amazing part, is, like, seeing all the parents bring their kids and supporting yeah. them mm -hmm. 100%, and, like us being able to be these role models that I'm sure their parents thought maybe we're just like freaks that got ready in a nightclub one day. But right. we're like successful and like living our dreams and it's so inspirational for these like little five year olds to Well I think that's that's what's really important about the show is that it not only shows the glamour and the sparkles and the fun times and the glitz and the cattiness and all that good stuff that we all love, but it also shows you guys without your faces on and being vulnerable and being real and talking about your personal trials and tribulations and how hard life is. So I get it. Um, yes, do you have a question? Hi, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, me again. I just wanted to add on to that just because it is so true, like seeing, so when you do tour, you know, touring is fun, Mary mm -hmm. and Peter and the Voss tours, they bring in different audiences that wouldn't traditionally come to a gay bar. And I've met a lot of mothers that are Christian moms. And you know, I love the Jeebus Crispy. Okay, wonderful. And for them to come to a drag show at a theater, it's still a drag show. You still gonna hear the same shit. You still gonna see drag queens. And they're like, I'm bringing my son or my daughter to this. And they're a pseudo Christian. I think that just speaks volumes of the growth and of the platform that RuPaul's Drag Race has really shown the world. Mm -hmm. And it just means a lot to me. Thank you. Well right. said. It means a lot to a lot of people all over the world. 
Um, okay, let me, oh, do I still have questions? I have six minutes and five seconds to fill. Um, where are we? Oh, yes, here we are. Um, since you all have these massive platforms now, what's the most important thing you want to accomplish with your drag? And um, let's just, let's go to Latrice. Um, you know, it's re especially recently um, with the election and the, the political climate that we are in right now, um, I just got my voters' rights restored. Yay! Amazing. So, you know, when obviously, you know, I, I was, I'm an open book. When I came into my season, I let everybody know that I've been to prison and my, my, my trials and tribulations, losing my mother during that period, um, and my rise to where I am now. Um, and I think it's important that people like us who have a platform uh, to be able to tell people and share our stories so that not only are we relatable, but we're teaching you that there is a better way and that your problems are temporary and that's not the end of the world. And it's so important that now we're aware that it's important that you use your voice for those who cannot speak for themselves. You know, I just got my, my voters' rights back. So for years, right. I didn't have a voice in this world. And I paid my taxes, but I couldn't vote. So it's like, if everyone does their part and spread the word and use your voice for good and your platform for good, I think we're going to be on the road to success. So I think it's important that we all do that. Let's hope, though. So, yeah. And thank you for oh. that. Latrice for president. Yeah. What are you doing in uh, two years? You can maybe Ooh, run. Yeah. Now that I got my bonus right. Yeah. <laughs> Set your sights high, girl. Ah, Just you running for president, anything. guys. Latrice Royale, 2020. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. I'm voting. If Latrice Anyone ever, can do it these days. Write me in. If Latrice and Michelle Obama were on the same ticket, bitch, I'm voting every day. Okay, Hello. honey? Uh -huh. I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Does anybody else have any thoughts on, on how you're using your platform? Um, I, I feel a, res a responsibility, not politically, but just, just generally to be an example of Latin excellence. Mm -hmm. What I try I to... I do the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... I, I uh, <laughs> I just think I feel that what I can feature through my culture and my mm -hmm. upbringing is just putting forward the message that being Latino is beautiful and that people like me that come from not very much can achieve so much and dream very big and that it's achievable and that if you really believe in yourself, no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, if you work really hard at it and you have a push and a drive, they can achieve these things that where you come from is beautiful and that you should embrace it and use it as a platform and that what I do is not necessarily political but it can be because through the representation of how much you love yourself and your culture, mm -hmm. there's many people that will love you and can identify with that and push the conversation forward that being Latino is beautiful and that we're not represented as criminals or rapists or anything like what Dr Donald Trump is representing. Mm -hmm. But through what I'm doing, I'm featuring the music and the beauty and the fashion and the glamour of being Latino. And I hope that with my platform, I can push that forward through the beauty of it all. True. You're Just to boss. bounce off of Valentina. Mm. I do feel a responsibility now with my platform, especially being on All Stars, to bring um, trans visibility, obviously, to the drag world. Show people that drag is an art form. It has nothing to do with your sexual orientation, your gender. It's open for everyone. Mm -hmm. Non-binary men, women, trans whatever you may be, drag is such a universal art, and I just want to spread a little bit more love and a little less hate, and I think we're, we're getting there. Yeah. My main mission for the next year is to really convert into the trans activist that I feel that I am in my heart, and also um, never forgetting where I come from, being a showgirl, obviously, is the reason why I am the proud trans woman that I am today. Mm -hmm. But I do feel that trans showgirls in general and trans artists have been kind of left in the dark a little bit, and I'm trying to bring light to that, and I will bring light to my community. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. You know, piggybacking off of both of these girls as well, I, you know, being a black gay man and being a drag queen, I do feel so empowered by bringing drag to more urban spaces. Mm -hmm. Because you know, for a long time, even though gay men have been at the epicenter of the of the ballroom scene and vogue culture, you know, going to going to drag on and seeing like groups of black moms with their little boys mm. and their daughters. Coming Did you to drag see the um, 
Th this year at DragCon, um, and it's at the Javits Center, uh -huh. and this happened to me. There were all these like fabulous black women, and they were like yeah, with their kids, it was and I was so like, God, I, I can't believe they're all here. But there was there was like a black like Bible conference going on yes, the other level, yes. and we all had to use the same bathroom. So I was like, Oh, these girls are fierce, and, <laughs> and we were like walking by, them, and I was like, This is a strange combination. It was I thought strange. they were Listen. all there for Drag Race, but they weren't. But they loved it, yes. is my point. Monique and I, we would will, we will go have Sunday service, Hello. then go meet the kids at DragCon. You I know saw I mean? you guys doing the Sunday service. Yeah. And there was, a, yeah. there was it's, a minister there. It's just so there. beautiful to see these black moms and, and black dads and just Very to see bad. it being so loved and, and, and accepted by communities for a long time growing up would we would shun it right. and would not welcome such a community. So it's, it's really awesome to see that happening with drag being more mainstream. No, that was that was a very cool moment at DragCon. And if you guys haven't been to DragCon, it happens here in New York yes, every September. Do. RuPaul's and it's so good. Com. Use yes. the code Naomi20 for 20% off. It's exactly. Definitely, <laughs> it's um, definitely been such a... It works on the tickets, not the merch. <laughs> <laughs> and only at specific booths. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we are perfectly on time right now. We are going to take some questions from Twitter. Now, this is... Um, we have two Twitter questions. This is from at bone underscore maw. That's that wow. makes me uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> Which format do you prefer, lip sync for your life or lip sync for your legacy? Legacy! And is there a legacy. new format twist, which you can't answer? I pretend I didn't even ask that question, but um, yeah, who likes for your life or for your legacy? What's, what's the difference? I like for your life. Cause you're like fighting, 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 fighting right. to stay there. And it's like so dramatic. But it's also really cool to lip sync for your legacy, like to see queens doing that and to possibly participate in that. I mean, one's um, got to obviously be, be more fun and less nerve-wracking. Totally, and you get to just go and show your 100% talent and what you're really good at. And yeah, I think sometimes the, they're better that way. Yeah, I mean, especially because Lip Sync for Your Legacy, if you win, you get $10,000. Dollars! Dollars. Okay. And then the right to send one of these bitches home. Very nice. No, this season was 10,000 pesos. They change it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, budget cuts. Gennaro. Um it's Anybody okay. else I'll take on that? I'll take it. Which you prefer, Jasmine? I like I'm you, sorry, huh? Say did what? You, <laughs> do you prefer <laughs> lip syncing for your life or for your legacy? Oh, I don't like neither one. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good answer. Very truthful. I don't like neither one. So, yeah. I don't like It is very stressful. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like to say that I would like lip sync for your legacy more than lip sync for your life mm -hmm. because mine was kind of I didn't really I lip synced against someone Charlie who wasn't Hides. really doing much so right. I didn't get the full the full the full fight it wasn't as satisfying the crack trap yeah. you didn't get the kill <laughs> like, I maybe, maybe a redo for that I would t I'm sorry Trent I didn't mean to cut you off twice I'm sorry uh, third time you out bitch <laughs> I was about to pull off your wig, bitch. Uh, I would say lip syncing for your uh, your legacy because it's the f like you really don't get to lip sync, which is what we do as drag queens. So when you get to lip sync for your legacy, besides knowing that you're gonna win ten stacks when you win, mm -hmm. it's like, bitch, I get to show the fucking world with no extra unnecessary pressure what mm -hmm. the fuck I do. Yeah, and you know you're safe. Right. Very bad. <laughs> exactly. Very bad. But here's the thing: with listening for your life, the stakes are so high. It's like it's like going to see a, a Broadway show that never has a peak. It's like, uh, where are the stakes in the story? But when you're listening for your life, you are literally trying to, you know, you, you're trying. Well, to I need a bad cartwheel, so. A crunch wheel. A crunch, crunch wheel. wheel. Oh. The only All right, we're going to go wheel. on to our second Twitter question. This is from at K underscore E-L underscore L-Y. How sickening were RuPaul's looks this season without giving away too much? Ooh, I mean, did they're you see always the promo? sickening, right? <laughs> oh, the promo. We're going there. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah. she, she looked great in the promo. <laughs> I mean, yes. they're kind of always the same, aren't they? Like, oh! What? <laughs> oh, my God. We've got to go to a commercial. Rainbow. What she meant to say was, She's we've seen to get her better, chair. and so have you. I think, I think um, RuPaul has achieved such a level of success. She has a beautiful team around her, like Zaldi Stunning and Raven, stuff, yeah. working behind her to make her look gorgeous and beautiful, and she was definitely delivering her best to look gorgeous. And it's always such an honor to like stand there and to stare at her and study yeah. the glamour We're, and the success be and that team behind like her to look the whole so time gorgeous. I'm like, oh yeah. my God, how does this One of my work? favorites was the, I, I don't know if y'all remember, the flower. Is it from this season? No, season oh. 10. Oh, season 10. Yeah. Well, tell us what it was. It was the white, the white. 
Oh, hours. was it the outlined jumpsuit? Yeah, that was so oh, I love that cat suit. Yes, yes. It's episode one. Yes. It was, it was also the promo thing. look. Money. I love a it cat suit. Very good. Money. Now tell me oh. about this promo shoot. Um, it was it's very like wintry, oh, is she in that icy one? confection. <gasps> The lighting was off. No, I mean, your guys' experience with it. Somebody I loved wanted- it. I loved the, the color scheme. I loved the mm-hmm. um, the lighting the glacier was off. and, like, breaking into the crown. I did like that. It was fun. Hammering that ice block. Yes. All right, we're going to take Photos some questions from our esteemed audience here. Oh, look, you're so already cute. on deck. That's That looks like Asia O'Hara's Tweety Bird look from season... I can't remember. No, this one is finished. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> the okay, one which, that has what, an Emmy. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, um, my name is Corwin. Um, I love all of you guys. You guys look gorgeous. Um, my question is, um, in reference to the lip syncs that took place on this season, what could you? How could you describe them in one word? Mm. What was the Epic. The lip syncs this season. How would Without you describe them? Good, oh, good, what my good, God. Good, 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 good pussy. <laughs> <laughs> There you have it. Thank you. Yeah. You'll just have to watch the show and Thank find you, out. Corwin. I, I think, I mean, you're already sitting down, honey, but I think that um, <laughs> this, this season, there's a lot of performers, like really good stage performers. So I think you guys are in for a treat. Yeah. I do think it's one of, it's, it's, a fantastic all-star season and you get that all-stars level of quality because these bitches are prepared and they are hungry to win. All right, we have another question coming up on deck. Hi, how is okay, hi, what's your name? Alex. Hi, Alex. And, um, I just wanted to address it to everybody. What is it about Drag Race that you find so enticing to want to go back again for a second or third time? Uh, money, money, Listen, money. can I answer this one? Money. Can Pheromone answer this money. one? Because I feel like when you do Drag Race the first time and it doesn't go how you would have hoped or envisioned, Mm -hmm. you really want to go back and show people, you know, like, I guess when I was on season nine, I was in a very weird place in my life. Like, I, um, I kind of just put my audition tape out there just to see what would happen. Not necessarily fully intending to get the call back. <laughs> and then when you get the call back, you can't say no. So you do what you can. And, you know, like, it's all a new experience. You're, it's your first time being in front of cameras. There's all these people everywhere telling you to do this or that. There's people, Mike, I mean, it's just, it's a very overwhelming experience. And I think that, I mean, me personally, I wanted to go back not being scared of the production of it all. And, like, my Lady Gaga reveal that never happened on season nine. Like, a Mike person told me that I should not take off my jacket because they didn't know how to mic me in my latex, but it wasn't the actual mic girl that ended up mic. I mean, it was just like, it wasn't even there's all things girl. that can kind it of like sabotage. Out. And with all stars, it's like all in or all out. You know what I mean? Like, this is your chance to fucking show the world who you really fucking are as an entertainer and what your taste level is and what your sort of mind, what your creative ideas can come up with. And um, I think that I, I would never go back. Twice is enough. <laughs> I think the really cool wow. thing wow. is is that now that we have you know, like you know proven ourselves and we've gotten to tour around the world and make some coins, it's really nice to come back and have the opportunity to show the world what we can do with our creativity mm-hmm. when we have a little more money. Okay, so the 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 runways are going to be sickening this season. I am so, so excited fierce. to watch watch all these bitches run yeah. down the runway. So I speak agree. for yourself, Monique and I came from season ten. I ain't got no money. Okay, honey, <laughs> I am still using Chipotle coupons. Okay, just to be very clear. No, but you do you do have that that experience when you go on those tours. I mean, you learn so much and. That's a real confidence builder. When you can like work a room in Antwerp when they don't even understand English or something, that's your chops get really fine tuned and it shows. And I'm telling you, the looks, the performances, all of it, season four, top notch. Um, yes, what she said. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Uh, Michael David, congratulations on how far you all have come. You all look so sickening. So big congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, now, when you guys walked in on the first day of shooting, what was the thing that you were looking forward to most? Taking my shoes off. Amen. 
I mean, oh that, let's, well, let's, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. let's delve like... into that more. Is actually, when you come back for All-Stars, is it actually fun and exciting, and are, are you invigorated, or are you, like, freaking out like you were the first time? You get to, like, on your season, you build such a strong bond in that filming span with right. these girls. It's kind of like summer camp to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you bad. get really close really fast. Yeah, and you're all kind of terrified, and you need each other. Exactly. And All-Stars is, like, is not different at all. So It's, it's like really being cool in the trenches have. in war, but with glitter and glue on eyelashes. Bowers. But very yeah. similar. It's really cool to have a bunch of new, really close sisters. Friends. Yeah, I friends. Like yeah you're right. Friends. friends. Acquaintances. Coworkers. Friends. <laughs> Associ- <laughs> associates. <laughs> Colleagues. <laughs> Co-workers. Colleagues. I feel like when you go back, like you, like I'm, I come from pageant, so it's like, it's like a pageant. Like kind of, you know, right. if you're really competitive and you're going back, you just, it, it's another fire that's lit under you to like be competitive and be the best, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully. And it's, it's just when you walk in, you're like, okay, I'm ready to compete. You're ready to pounce. Now, when you walk into that workroom, you say, I just increased my booking fee. Yeah! Yes. I'm a VH motherfucking one, bitch. But also, I feel like, oh, for me, I can speak for myself, is walking in, <laughs> oh, walking into All Stars, just like your regular season, like you hear the rumors of who might be there. Right. But like when you walk in and you actually see who really is your competition, it's like, oh, those Reddit rumors were true. This bitch really is here. You know what I mean? So it's like the anticipation. And the, some, to be honest for myself, scared of who the other competitors uh-huh. were going to be was like my biggest anxiety walking into All Stars because you never know who is really going to be in the room. Right. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. This was super fun. Give it up for all of the gals, for all of our amazing contestants for All Stars 4. You must. Must watch. There's an amazing holiday special this Friday, December 7th, and then the season kicks off Friday, December 14th on VH1.